So why are people obese now? And why is it the people who are, at the, again, the lower end of the income distribution who are obese? It's, it's like taking an aspirin for bird flu, right? We're, we're treating something that really has deep social and psychological reasons for existing with a, a very kind of facile monetary lever, which is probably going to end up making people who are suffering right now suffer even more. So the economic logic behind a sugar tax is basically very simple. Demand curves slope downward, which means that people buy less of something when it is more expensive. So if you think that the people who are currently buying sugary drinks are likely to buy less of them when the price goes up, which is a, a reasonable presumption if demand curves slope downward, then this tax would encourage at least some people to not buy as many sugary drinks. The question, of course, is what are they going to buy instead? So. That is a question which hasn't been well answered in the literature. There haven't really been uh, final studies that show us exactly how people's behavior adjusts when they have a sugar tax, because there haven't been that many sugar taxes. The UK has just passed one, of course, and so we can all watch what happens there to see whether consumers stop buying sugary drinks and start buying water, for example, which is what I think the health lobby would like, or whether maybe they stop buying sugary drinks and now start buying, I don't know, juices or chocolate milk or something, which may or may not have the intended effects. Now, the broader question is really whether or not a sugar tax is something that we could expect to have an impact on obesity. And again, for that, we have to think about who is actually buying the sugary drinks. Is it the people who are at the higher level of income? Is it the people who are at the lower level of income? So we've had these sugary drinks for a long time, but we haven't had the obesity problem for a long time. So what does that tell you? Presumably that sugary drinks are not actually the cause of obesity. Now, they may be helping it along a little bit, and certainly when you hook children into it at an early age, just as with tobacco, there's more of a chance that they, they sort of start down a path of bad eating and obesity, which causes them not to be able to do other activities in life, and then it's sort of a negative spiral. But it's not the sugary drinks originally caused obesity. Now, a lot of the people who are dr buying these sugary drinks, who are getting obese, who are basically having these problems that we want to fix with supposedly with this tax, they are the people who don't have as many mental resources because they are under more pressure. They were born into more disadvantaged situations than you and I may have been. They are struggling economically in the race of life in various ways. These are real human beings who are suffering, and we're going to, what, impose a tax so they have to suffer more? I think part of the, the social pressure comes in um, the form of inequality. So the, the, the more badly off sort of a person at the, say, you know, 10th decile of income is compared to the person at the 90th, perhaps the more pressure that person feels and then the more that person is, is not going to have the mental resources to resist the various temptations around him and, and is going to be more oriented towards the present and all of the other things that we know are associated with negative health behaviors. And so to the extent that economic policy can help to reduce inequality, income inequality, wealth inequality, equality of opportunity, um, then that might be one potential method to try to address obesity in the longer run.